Well, what's up everybody? I'm Devin, I'm the head brewer here at Paradox Brewery, and I'm here to show you around, show you how we do things here. All right, so we've been around for about seven years now. We just recently moved up to our new location here in North Hudson. Uh, it's a pretty big expansion from where we used to be. We started on a small 10 barrel brewery down in, uh, down in Scroon Lake. Uh, it was only 1,400 square foot facility for doing everything that we currently do here in a 27,000 square foot facility. Uh, as you can see, our equipment's a lot bigger than it used to be. We came from a 10 barrel brew house and upgraded to a 40 hectoliter brew house, which is about 35 barrels. So we're going to talk about some of our core beers. First one I opened here is Parahelis. It's a German style Helles lager. Malty, low alcohol, sessionable. Uh, it's got a blend of German malts and hops and uh, it's a really crisp, easy drinking beer. So the next beer we're going to talk about is Paradox Pilsner. This is one of our oldest core beers. It's our old reliable, uh, really big in the summertime and it's a really good cross up between a Czech and a German style Pilsner. We're sitting here on the brew house to talk about another core beer, Beaver Overbite Double IPA. This is somewhat related to Beaver Bite IPA, our flagship brand, but it's bigger, fruitier, and a little bit more hoppy. All right, next we're going to talk about Beaver Bite IPA. This is our flagship beer. It's what we make by far the most of here. It's a New England style double IPA, and it's got really awesome notes like tangerine, a little bit of orange marmalade, and pine. So the last core beer we're going to talk about today is Get Off My Lawn. This is an American Amber Lager, and it's multi, sessionable, and refreshing. So we're about to go on a brewery tour. We're going to walk through the entire facility and I'm going to explain to you the entire brewing process and a little bit about the equipment that we use and why it's such world-class equipment. So, you can't see all the malt handling equipment over here because most of it's outside, but you can get a little snippet right here. This is basically where, this hopper right here is where we dump our specialty malts. So basically beer is made up of four main ingredients, water, malt, hops, and yeast. And um, malt's probably the biggest by weight, the biggest by volume ingredient that we handle, maybe other than water. So all of our malt handling kind of takes place over here. There's two big silos right on the other side of this wall over here outside that hold all of our base malts. And this little hopper right here is where we dump specialty malts. So after we dump every, all of our specialty malts in, we uh, set the recipe parameters in our brew house and everything is conveyed over towards the malt handling area through these pipes. So it's a chain disc conveyor. You can see there's some malt in here already. And um, that carries everything over this way. Now we gotta take a little bit of a walk to see the rest of the process. So this is our mill. Up top here, you can see where we got the Lunar Lander up here, which is actually our grist case. And that holds an entire batch's worth of malt. Um, that'll hold our biggest batches like Overbite or any Imperial IPAs we wanna make or anything like that. And it's got a plenty of capacity to hold, you know, uh, I don't know, 14, 16% beer. So the malt sits up there, and then if we come over this way just a little bit, it sits up here, and then when it's time for us to brew the beer, it drops into this middle chamber right here. That's a steeping chamber. In there, that malt's gonna get sprayed with water before it drops into this bottom chamber here, and this is like, this is where the real business happens. In here, there's two one-ton crushing rollers. Those babies rotate, and they, they don't so much crush the malt and destroy it into a powder as they like squeeze the individual malt kernels and pop the endosperms out of them like little edamames and it drops out of that chamber and then goes through another pipeway, which is this one right here. Jumps up into this rack and it goes all the way over. Now we're gonna go over to the brew house, see where things really happen. We just came from the mill and we know that the malt is conveyed through that pipeway over there that we just saw. And it's gonna go to this first tank over here on the brew house, which is represented digitally right here by this guy. That's our mash ton kettle. And what we're going to do in that tank is we're going to hold that grain that we just crushed up on the other side of the process at specific temperatures for specific times, depending on what we're trying to do with the beer. Um, with our new brew house from GEA, we have a lot of really finite control over the, the different mash regimes we can do. So right now we're working on like, uh, I think it's a three or a four step mash regime. And um, at our old facility, we would never have had the opportunity to do that. All right, so we just talked about the mill, and now we're crushing the grain up in the mill. After the grain is crushed in the mill, it's conveyed over to this tank right here through some pipeways, and this is our mash tongue kettle. In this tank, we have a lot of really finite control over the way our mash is uh, held at different temperatures. 
and we can really dial in the way we want our malt to behave. Um, so what we're doing in this tank is mixing the grain with hot water at a predetermined temperature that's really specific to get the flavors or haze or crispiness or sweetness that we want out of every individual beer we make. Um, after it sits in this tank for however long it needs to, for however many mash rests it has, we actually pump it from this tank over to this tank. I turn the lights on every time out of force of habit. So this is the louder ton. And basically all this tank does is separates that grain material that we have, that um, husk material and that endosperm out. It separates the liquid from all that solid grain material. So basically what we're doing here is we're making grain tea. So this is the separation part of basically steeping. After we uh, separate the grain from the grain tea, we're actively pumping it out of this tank and into this tank. And simultaneously we're pumping hot water into the top of this tank to really just rinse all of those sugars that we created out of the beer, out of the wort. And then we hit this tank. And this is where the, most of the action happens up here, frankly. This is the boil kettle. And in this tank, we'll boil a beer generally for about an hour each recipe, but you know, you can boil it for up to like hour and a half, two hours, depending on different recipes. And um, this is also where we'll add all of our hot side kettle hops. So we'll add those hops earlier in the process, earlier in the boiling process for more bitterness, kind of in the middle of it for more like flavor hops, and then towards the end for more aroma. All right, so now we're here at a point in the process that we here at Paradox do, but not a lot of other breweries necessarily do. So this is our centrifuge. A lot of breweries are running centrifuges, everybody's running them on the cold side. But what we do that's a little different than not everybody, but some other people is we actually run this centrifuge twice for every beer. And as our, after our hot wort is boiled over here that we already talked about, we actually run it through the centrifuge to separate out any proteins that came in naturally from the malt and separate out any of that hot material that we dumped into the boil kettle. So this is gonna keep make sure our beers stay really clear and that they really just, uh, put their best foot forward with the ingredients we put in them. After everything runs through the centrifuge, it kind of runs through some pipeways up above our heads, through some flow panels, yada yada, and then through some hoses. But eventually where we want to end up is here, into our fermenters. Um, in line, while the beer is on the way to the fermenter, we'll inject yeast to ferment those sugars that we made in the malting process, or in the mashing process, into beer. So uh, yeast are going to produce most of the flavors you get in beer. They're going to produce alcohol, CO2, and over something like 475 flavor components have been identified by yeast. Everybody likes to talk about the tangible assets that you can put your hands on, being malt and hops and stuff like that, but what really makes the flavor of your beer and what really makes your beer great is your yeast and how you handle it and how you take care of it. And then after it sits in these tanks, it'll ferment for anywhere from like 16 to 30-ish days, depending on the beer we're making. Occasionally, depending on the beer we're making again, we'll actually dump hops right into the tops of these tanks in a process called dry hopping where we're really just trying to put our best foot forward with a lot of aroma in the beer but after that these beers or these tanks get cooled down to just below freezing they run through the centrifuge that we already talked about again to get whipped out clear or maybe stay a little hazy depending on what we're going for and then they'll run all the way down this way to some of these dish bottom tanks. So these four tanks on either side of us right here are all packaging tanks. These are what you call bright tanks. And in these tanks, we're carbonating the beer, just doing a little bit of polished carbonation on the beer, sending it out of the bottoms of these tanks right into this pipeway over here, and then it goes over to the canning line. All right, so we're just gonna wrap it up here, talk about a couple more things. Um, we're really excited to be in our new space. We have the ability here to produce a lot of really high quality, world-class beer, more than we ever really could have dreamed of. And we're just really excited to be in our new spot. We want to remind everybody to follow us on all their, all their social media channels at Paradox Brewery.